How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to WWE Headlines right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. You can follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you want to follow us on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP is where you can find us on there. If you want to go ahead and listen to us on the go, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Android and Apple devices. It's free to download, free to make a profile. You can chat with us when we are live on the air, and you can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on there as well. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find us. We would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all upload updates. You can get 2K content, unboxings, and again, like I said, all video versions of the podcast. I am your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And bringing back W Headlines, I haven't done one of these in a while, so if you're new to the channel and new to the podcast, W Headlines is where I go over all news and rumors uh, for the WWE throughout the week. Again, I when I say rumors, please take them with a grain of salt. This is not a source for you to go to uh, to get uh, news and take it uh, seriously. I read them as the reports come through. I give you my opinions on them, and I give you my opinions if I think they are true. Don't come here and, and criticize maybe that, oh, you said this and it didn't come true. You know, I'm not a, a source for WWE News. I just get the reports that I subscribe to, and I read them to you guys, and I give you guys my opinion. And I want to hear your opinions out there. So if you guys have an opinion on uh, some of the rumors and the news that I read, let let me know down on the YouTube comments, or if you want to tweet at us at no holds barred WP or at Real Kyle Masters, I want to hear your opinions out there. So they matter to me. I, I just want to generally discuss some of the news and rumors. So if you guys have an opinion, let me know. If not, thank you for listening in. And uh, I'm doing WWE headlines in a different way this time. Usually I would do it all jam packed, one show, bunch of news, and it's just to me it just it's too crammed. I kind of want to split it up in a couple of parts. So. Part one would be a Friday, part two would be a Saturday, and part three would be a Sunday. Um, if there's enough news, if not, then maybe just be part one and part two, or maybe there's only a little bit of news and I only do part one. So part one for this Friday for you guys uh, will be today, and uh, there's always going to be like a main heading for each uh, part. Uh, this part is going to be about the recently uh, rumors of the WWE brand split and the uh, dual brand and pay-per-views coming back. So that will be the main focus for this one. Um... I think I had some more news. Oh, yes, that's right. On the YouTube channel, guys, youtube.com slash NHBWR, we're going to be doing a, a new uh, kind of like a, a 2K TV show kind of thing. And it's basically it's main event, but it's going to be main event in a different vision, not the one you remember uh, in real life right now with it being every Friday night and you're showing like the jobber matches or matches that really don't matter and they kind of go over Raw and SmackDown. Um, it's going to be uh, a, a 2K series t- TV show, I and mean, it's going to be on YouTube Live. So I'll be commentating over it on YouTube Live. It's going to be three matches per show, and there'll be three main event ca- quality matches. So with main event talent and in really like fantasy type style matches. So episode one will be coming out to you guys soon. Hoping to get episode one live out to you guys next week. So stay tuned for that and for a uh, basically a a date on when I'm going to be doing it live. I still haven't figured that out yet. I'm doing a lot more editing with it too. So Stay tuned uh, for that. So, let's get right into the news. Um, and that is what I, I've said before. is uh, The WWE pay-per-view changes going forward. So there's a lot of changes going on right now. Um, I have some rumors about it. i got some news about it. So, we'll discuss it. And, I want again, I want to know you guys, your opinions out there. So, let me know. Either YouTube comments down below or on, uh, if you're listening live, either tweet at us, no holds barred WP or at Real Kyle Masters. So, the first heading is uh, Backlash is officially changing. Um, the 2018 Backlash pay-per-view is scheduled to take place at the Prudential Center in New Jersey. Um, the event will be on May 6th and will be the first pay-per-view following WrestleMania 34. Um, so April, so WrestleMania is like April 7th, I believe. So basically, it's a whole month. So this is what, this is the one good thing we can get out of it. It's not like a two-week build to another pay-per-view. At least it's a whole month. Um and it appears that there's a major change coming to the 2018 edition of Backlash. Um, originally, this was supposed to be a Raw exclusive event, but ticket holders for the show have received emails saying that Backlash will now feature members of both Raw and SmackDown Live. It was originally advertised as a Raw exclusive event, like I just said. And the email reads this, Attention ticket holders, 
This is just a friendly reminder about your event. Excuse me. WWE uh, presents Backlash at Prudential Center Sunday, May 6th at 7.30 p.m. This will now be a combined pay-per-view with both Raw and SmackDown Live superstars. So the arena itself and the people who've bought tickets have now emailed the people and said that it's going to be Raw and SmackDown. So now it's a dual brand and pay-per-view. So that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. I mean, if I did buy tickets for that and I was going to a uh, backlash, I'd be happy now that I'm going to be seeing a dual brand and pay-per-view. So I don't know why some people would be pissed off at that. I've actually read some comments that people were actually mad that that was happening. I'm going... Really, the, the, the single branded pay per view has been so bad so far. You you should be getting excited for a, a dual branded pay per view, but that is what it is. Um, so we got some news about the pay per views going forward from this, uh, going on after this. So uh, there's an update from Dave Meltzer again. Dave Meltzer, we know about him. If you don't know about him, you take his stuff with a grain of salt. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true. It's a little a little bit out there. Um, again, so this is just rumors. Uh, Dave Meltzer on the latest Observer uh, newsletter says that this hasn't been confirmed yet, but Meltzer says that the belief is WWE pay-per-view events will be extended uh, once they become all dual-branded. So there's actually rumor out there saying that it's going to be all dual-branded pay-per-views going forward from Backlash and on. Uh, every pay-per-view main card will likely extend be extended by one hour, which would bring it to four hours long. This would be in addition to a one-hour kickoff show, that will feature two matches. The typical brand exclusive pay per view has, uh, typically, yeah, typical brand exclusive pay per view has three hours, a uh, three hour main card. The bigger show, SummerSlam, WrestleMania, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, are four hour plus. So, if I can get around this and try to get this right, so it's saying that all dual branded pay per views going forward are going to be four hours long, like SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, like the main card. It's going to be four hours and then a one-hour pre-show. So five hours. Whoops, just hit my mic. Five hours every single pay-per-view. If you're going to do this, you better do it literally. Like There's got to be a four- to six-week build for every single pay-per-view. You cannot have one dual-branded pay-per-view and then three weeks later have another dual-branded pay-per-view because that's way too much. And then there's way too much to fit on one card. Like five hours of wrestling, you're going to have to think of that. Oh, man, that's crazy. Uh, I don't know what I really feel about that. The one-hour kickoff show is useless anyways. Does anyone actually go and watch the kickoff show, really? If there's not a match you're not looking forward to, which nine times out of ten the pre-show doesn't show a match that you're actually going to be invested in, um, why even watch it? Why even have a one-hour pre-show match? I don't understand. But now five hours, like that's going to be every single pay-per-view going forward. They're really pushing the envelope with this one. Uh, the rest of this article says the reason is because they would have to fit the top stars and storylines of both brands onto one show. That's understandable, but it's all they do. WWE has this problem of pushing people just for the sake of putting them on the card, rather than if they have nothing for them, they won't want to leave them off the card. Uh, and I understand that they're making the big bucks and they're on the main roster, they should be showcased every pay per view, but. You look at what NXT does, and it doesn't feature these people on a weekly basis. If they have nothing for them, they don't even have them in a storyline. But it has so much storyline going on that they don't feature it on a on its show on a weekly basis. And it, it's doing perfect. People love that idea, and people are enjoying it. It's just the main roster feels like they have to shove everything right in front of you. And, and to, for me as a fan, it's too much to take in half the time. Like, you're sitting there watching a three-hour Raw, and it's just it's dragging. And you're just going, okay, when are we going to get to the end? You watch SmackDown, and it, SmackDown, it's like they do it the reverse. Like, they have so much, but they have little time, and Raw has little, but has so much time. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, to me, it's like they really need to stop and stop quick-firing all these ideas and, and doing all these things and rushing all these things. They really need to sit and think about it because, to me, I don't think they're actually thinking about it. They just see the idea and say, okay, put it out there. Don't even, th- don't even think about it. Just put it out there. And to me, that's the wrong idea. So... Uh, Last part of this article says, as noted prior to our rumor mill article, this will likely lead to more title matches on a weekly television. This is because titles will not always make the match for the pay-per-view card. Now, I'm all for title matches appearing on the regular shows more often. I love how NXT does it a lot, and it it creates good storylines. It can create good matches, um, like we've seen this past week on NXT with uh, the... Uh, sorry, Roderick Strong and Pete Dunn match that was incredible, really, really well done, uh, put together match there for the UK title. So I'm all for that happening on the weekly shows. Uh, so I think that's the only good thing I can take out of that article. 
But besides that, they really need to stop and think about what they're doing and kind of slow down a little bit because to me it just it feels just so like rushed. So hopefully we'll see what happens and they kind of maybe they do think about it more because nothing has been officially released yet. So hopefully they're thinking about it more and putting more effort into actually making this a good idea. So we will see uh, what happens. All right, to some more news about this uh, whole branded pay, dual branded pay per view thing. Uh, the rumor reason why WWE could be changing to dual branded pay per view. So here's the reason why they are doing it, and the rumored reason. Uh, Dave Meltzer provided an update on the situation on the Wrestling Observer again. Grain of salt. Meltzer says that when looking into it, he's he was told that an official announcement will be coming soon from WWE itself on the situation. So. He's saying we're going to get an official uh, WWE uh, announcement. Maybe it's Kurt Angle on Raw or Shane and Daniel on SmackDown. I highly doubt it will be those two. I think it's going to be more Kurt Angle and Stephanie on Raw. I think we're going to get an announcement. Or maybe it's going to be you know, Mike Rome on the WWE.com exclusive. Something crappy like that. Um, he also provided some potential reasons why WWE could be moving to dual-branded events. Meltzer says that some of the tickets... Ticket advances for the single brand pay per view haven't been <laughs> haven't been very strong. Now I sit here and I read this and I'm going, okay, so they're saying they want to sway away from single branded pay per views because the ticket sales haven't been strong. Now I wonder why their ticket sales haven't been doing right. You think about it. You're you're putting together these single branded pay per views in like almost a three week build half the time. You look at 2017 or and even tw- 2016 when they first started all this. Some of the single brand pay-per-views have had three-week builds, and you've literally done the worst builds imaginable. You've had pay-per-views that were just complete shit because of those short builds. Then when you had a long enough build, not, there's no good payoff out of it. You, you put together rushed matches that didn't make any sense. There were logic gaps anywhere. So no wonder people are not paying to go watch these single branded pay-per-views because you're not producing good television. If you were producing good television and no logic gaps, stuff that actually made sense and matches that made sense, and you actually took time and built towards these single branded pay per views, you wouldn't have this problem. I guarantee it. You we'd be filling these arenas like you fill Raw and Raw and sometimes SmackDown every single week. You would have no problem filling that arena if you actually took time and putting together a decent pay per view with some decent television. Because you don't, you get this problem. And they sit there and they wonder why, and they, I know guarantee that they're sitting there going, no, it can't be our television. We're doing so good booking news pay-per-views. Oh, I wonder why people are not coming. Um, anyways, the rest of this article says, he also says that there is so long in between single-branded pay-per-view events. What? So long in between. Are you kidding me? No, there's not. <sighs> that is slowing down the booking for television. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is a great excuse. Uh, there are sometimes two months from the, when a feud begins to the pay-per-view blow-off match. That's good, though. That's how you build good stories. That's how you, you get people invested in it, not like a three-week build or shit. Like, you, you rush everything, and it doesn't feel real. I, I love the long builds. I think a lot of you guys out there love the long builds. I, I don't agree with this whatsoever. Uh, as a result, WWE Television sits at a standstill and has stalled from week to week. Has to stall from week to week. Yeah, that's the reason. Yeah, because there's so much time between pay-per-views. Yeah, three weeks is way too much time, right? You gotta have one week build. Fucking <laughs> stupid. Uh, the dual branded shows would like or would uh, logically draw more ticket sales, as there will be more star power on the shows. Also, it would likely speed up storylines and feuds. Speed up storylines, because you know that's what we need to do. We need to speed up the storylines, right? Just like how NXT is creating one of the best storylines of all time with Trump and Johnny Gargano. Oh, that's way too rushed. So that's why it's doing good, right? Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> what a joke. Speeding up storylines is not the way to do it. You cannot speed up a storyline because you do not get people invested in it because you do it so fast. People will sit back and go, okay, wait, how, who, how did this, how, how, it doesn't make sense, right? It's not believable. You need to have these slow builds, and it has to. You can't just do it with anybody, right? I understand that you need to have the right characters for the slow build, but you can't just. To me, speed up storylines belong for the jobbers or sometimes some of the mid carters. If you don't do anything with those guys, give them a speed up storyline that makes more sense. But if you do it with the main event talent and the main stories, and it makes no sense and it just feels rushed and it's just garbage, and that's why it's coming out garbage at single branded pay per views. 
and you're wondering why people are not heading to these events. So, to me, I don't agree with this article whatsoever. You guys let me know what you think about out there. Um, and we'll see what happens with these the, the whole dual-branded pay-per-views going forward. We'll see what happens. I mean, to me, in my opinion, uh, I wouldn't... I don't mind a dual branded pay per views going forward, but to me, it's they wouldn't need to do it if they actually produce good television and longer builds for these single branded pay per views. Do not have two single branded pay per views a month. That's what makes that's what's killing it. You can have a let's say you started in May. You have the raw branded pay per view at the, at the top of May. You got the second one at the top of June for SmackDown, and then you can have Raw again at the bottom of of, of June. Like two. Two of them in the same month does kind of make sense if you are doing the build right from month to month. You know what I mean? They just they, to me they just they rush everything. They don't sit there and actually organize it properly, and they they, they rush the feuds, and that's what's creating bad pay per views. And now they're saying, oh, we need to actually speed up the storylines. No, it doesn't make any sense. So whatever it is, what it is, it looks like we're probably going to head towards dual branded pay per views. I don't think that there's a rumor uh, that it's going to be a, a co branded again, where Raw and SmackDown superstars are going to appear on both shows. I highly doubt that. I really, really highly doubt that. There's way too many superstars for them to do that. Um, they need to split two rosters. They just need to put more time and effort into making the storylines more believable. Like I said, slower storylines, longer builds, better payoff. To me, speeded up storylines and they're thinking that's going to be a better payoff, not going to happen. So whatever it is, what it is, dual branded papers looks like they're coming back. Uh, not really sure how the... Five hours would actually make it better, but we'll see what happens. It's got. It's almost going to be like we're going to see how it, it plays out. Like backlash is going to be the first judgment call, so we're going to have to wait till then to actually be able to give a full judgment on how it's going to be. Maybe they do it good. Maybe it actually. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it turns out to be good in the end. We'll see. Um, but that is all. That is it for that. I don't have any more news regarding it, guys. So uh, if more news comes around, maybe I'll have it on part two or part three. But as for now, that is all the news and rumors I have on the. Uh, WWE, uh dual branded pay per views going forward. Um, I thought I had something on the draft. I thought I had it here, and I don't think I do. No, I don't. Okay, so I'll save that for part two. I got some news about the draft going forward. Um, oh no, I do have it. It's right here. <laughs> that was my bad. Um, it's right here. So uh, what's going? What's coming out of this is. Uh, over the past 24 hours, there's rumors in uh, that began to circulate that Dirty B could be officially going away with individual pay-per-views for Raw and SmackDown, like I just said. Uh, Backlash is already confirmed to be the, the dual brand event. There is a rumor that has been surfaced that the potential 2018 Dirty B draft will be actually at Backlash. Russell Zone is reporting that Dirty B initially discussing going forward to draft at the Backlash pay-per-view. So, Backlash is going to be surrounded in the WB draft. We're going to have the backlash matches, but we're also going to be doing the WB draft. So, um, huge discussions around that. There's actually two reports saying that Charlotte will be going to uh, SmackDown, or sorry, Charlotte will be going to Raw, and Sasha Banks will be going to SmackDown as the big move in that WB draft. Um, they say it will be used as a way for WB to jumpstart the dual branded pay per views going forward. As noted, the current rumor is that the WWE pay-per-view events will feature stars from Raw and SmackDown Live starting after WrestleMania 34. Uh, take the rumors with a grain of salt, but it would make sense uh, as a way to shake things up a bit. You know how WWE loves to shake things up. The WWE did its first draft back in 2016 to kick off the brand split. Last year, they did the Superstar shake-up to change some people over the roster. So, Backlash looks like the date for the WWE draft. Um, I can see it happening there and really to get the... Uh, the dual brand pay views off to a good start and get the you know get the, the wheels turning to see how good it does. Um, so there you go, guys. Backlash is the rumored date for the draft. Again, take it with a grain of salt. Just a rumor. Um, there is a rumored reason for why they're having so many multi man matches. And I've been wondering this: why they're doing so many multi man, multi woman matches all of a sudden, even at pay per views, and it's like, why? Why? Why so many? It doesn't make any sense. Well, I have an article here that kind of makes sense out of it, so we'll see. <laughs> I'll read it to you guys, and then uh, I'll give you guys my opinion. I want to know your opinions out there. Um, there are two pay-per-views to go before WrestleMania 34. We still have the Raw's Elimination Chamber and a SmackDown Fastlane pay-per-view. Uh, both events will feature multi-man matches as the main events. The Men's Chamber match will see Reigns, Strowman, Elias, Seth Rollins, Miz, John Cena, Finn Balor face off inside the chamber in the first-ever seven-man Elimination Chamber. Um... Fastlane will see a fatal five-way for the WWE title. AJ Styles, Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Dolph Ziggler. So why is WWE doing so many multi-man matches before WrestleMania 34? 
According to uh, at WrestleVote uh, Twitter account, which has broken some stories in the past. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. We don't know how credible they are. They have broken stories in the past, but it could be luck. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. The reason that, that is to keep fans guessing. Here's what they posted. Uh, texting with my WWE source this morning. Interesting note. The reason both pay-per-views prior to Mania have multi-man main events, uh, 12 total guys, is to keep fans guessing. Keep fans guessing. as in quote in quotes. As to what's in store for WrestleMania. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Let me wait. Hold on a second. So the reason why they're doing multi-man matches at this pay-per-views coming up is to get people guessing for WrestleMania. <laughs> Please tell me that's a joke. Please tell me that's a joke. If they actually think that... Okay, sorry. Let me rephrase that. If they actually think the smart fans... All right? Not the casuals who little will believe anything dare to be spews out. But if they actually think a smart fans believe that anyone other than Roman Reigns is going to win the chamber and anyone other than AJ Styles is going to win that fatal five-way... You are completely high. Just saying. I, I, agree with me or not. If you think someone other than Roman Reigns is coming out of that chamber, you're crazy. If you think someone else other than Styles is going to win the Derby title before the ultimate dream match that if they don't do, fans are going to shit all over the product, you're crazy. It's going to happen. I don't know why they think it's going to keep us guessing. It's so obvious just like the most obvious match of Roman and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, people, everyone knows that match is going to happen. And the fact that R- Brock is leaving after WrestleMania to go back to the UFC, you're just making it even more obvious. And you think that's going to keep us guessing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but there was an interesting, uh, me and Cappy were talking about this. I thought about it, I'm going, oh my god, they could easily have Strowman walk out of the chamber. And then ha- ch- ch- put his shot on the line against Roman and make Roman look like a beast and beat Braun Strowman and go into WrestleMania. I can totally see that. So I wouldn't doubt if, if Strowman wins, but I guarantee it's going to be Roman, maybe Braun. Um, it's just it's one of the things that's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just that, that's that's crazy. They they want to keep us guessing. <laughs> that's a joke. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That's a joke. That's a complete joke. But uh, that's all the news I have regarding the uh, dual branded pay per views and I guess the multi man matches. Uh, if I have more news, I'll release it in part two or part three. Um, I got some little side side news here, so basically I'll do this every every uh, part two. There's gonna be little, I guess you can put side news like little news that's can't really talk too much about, so I save it for the end. Um, Rich Swan and Dirty B have agreed to a release. Rich Swan was suspended by Dirty B after he was arrested back in December. Uh, in January, all of the charges against Swan were dismissed due to... Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, I have, my allergies are going crazy today. Uh, <laughs> Swan was or were dismissed due to insufficient evidence. Still, Swan hadn't been back, had brought back to the WWE. Uh, WWE and Swan agreed to part ways on February 15th, so yesterday. Here's a statement from WWE. Rich Swan and Derby have mutually agreed to part ways as of today, February 15th, 2018. Derby wishes Swan the best in all his future endeavors. Um, don't know if it was mutual or not. It might have been mutual. Maybe Derby kind of played out like, look, we're going to bring you back, but we're going to have to punish you because of what happened to you. Me and Cappy put this in a good pr- perspective here. I think they would have to release Rich Swan because of what happened with Enzo. No proof came out that Enzo actually raped that uh, alleged girl but they still fired him anyways. I know he has a lot of back history and a lot of uh, heat in the locker room, and that was probably one of the reasons why they fired him. But And then Rich Juan, there wasn't really insufficient evidence, but then, you know, it, it's it's a little bit different from the, the two situations between Rich Juan and Enzo Amore, but I think everybody feels like they kind of have to do something, so they kind of, like, told him, like, look, if we bring you back, we're going to get a lot of backlash on it, so, um, you know, maybe we just release. Maybe we can work together in the future if when you, once you get everything cleared up and you get your life back on track. So, again, I f- wish uh, Rich one well in all his future endeavors, and I hope he does well and gets his life back on track. So we'll see what happens. I don't think this is the last time we've seen Rich Juan in the WWE. Next, Dolph Ziggler's new contract on SmackDown Live this week. Dolph Ziggler qualified for the WWE title match for whatever reason. And will now face AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Baron Corbin again for whatever reason in a fatal five-way match at Fastlane. A rumor broke over the past several days that Dolph Ziggler had also signed a new contract 
with the WWE. Uh, and this is confirmed. And Jim Barrasso of Sports Illustrated is reporting that Ziggler's new deal is worth $1.5 million per year for two years. So making $3 million in two years. That's a pretty big contract for a guy like that. They must have a lot of faith in him. Or he is going to agree to take the back seat and be a jobber for $1.5 million. The $1.5 million jobber man, Dolph Ziggler. So we'll see what happens with him. But the report also says Ziggler was also planning on re-signing with the company. This would be contrary to rumors suggesting that he was looking to leave the WWE. I think he should have left the WWE. Dolph Ziggler should have just left. He could have made so much more money in the indies. He could have been part of the Bullet Club and got his career back on track and been more over than he ever has been in his entire career if he had left the WWE. I don't know why he chose to stay, but that's his decision. He can do what he wants. So congratulations, Dolph Ziggler, on reaching a new deal and becoming the $3 million man. (laughs) Um, Big cast injury update is what we're going to finish off with, guys. Um, Big Cass was injured on Raw episode after SummerSlam last year. This came during the match against Enzo Amore. It was revealed that Cass tore his ACL and would be out of action for several months. Uh, Here's an update. According to the report of Mike Johnson of the PW Insider, Big Cass has been spotted working out at the Performance Center as of late. Johnson says that he told Cass, or he is told that Cass looks to be in great shape and is walking around without any assistance. While saying that, there is no word yet. If he has been taking any bumps in the ring, it does appear as if Cass is trending in the right direction for his return. It has been six months since the surgery. The initial report for the WWE doctors uh, says he could be out uh, for up to nine months, but a likely return would have to be around May after WrestleMania. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with big Cass going forward because uh, we know the whole Enzo Amore thing. That was the big thing before he got injured. Um, I don't know what they would do from then on with big Cass. Do they push him against Braun Strowman because, you know, two big guys? Do they go, do they keep him as a heel? Do they bring him back as a baby face? Maybe he keeps the, the theme song, the Enzo and Cass theme song. I don't know what you do with this guy. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I don't know if they have a new character twist for him. So uh, I'm glad the big Cass is recovering well. And hopefully they got a story for him, man, because I think there's still a little potential in big Cass in the WWE. So we'll see what happens going forward with that. But, um, other than that, guys, that's going to be do it for part one here of There to Be Headlines. Um, thank you for tuning in, guys. Again, there's going to be part two and part three on the weekend. This is episode number seven of There to Be Headlines right here at No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Dirty to Be and No Holds Barred and anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast again, guys, on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. You can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy, and you can follow us on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP. If you want to listen to us on the go, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker, again, is a glorious podcast app that is free to download and available on Android and Apple devices. You can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast and even chat with us live when we are live on the air when we do the Lowdown Show. Um, if you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find that. Hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. You can get some 2K content unboxing unboxings and again like i said all video versions of the podcast i'm your host self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters i will see you for part two tomorrow